In this video, I'm gonna tell you how to lower your diastolic blood pressure. So make sure and get a paper and pen handy because I'm gonna give you all the resources that you need. My name is Dr. Story, welcome to my office. And right now it's lunchtime, so I've been in practice for over 25 years. I'm gonna give you some realistic information based on my experience and based on the scientific literature. So let's just dive into it. Nutrition is one of the biggest things you can do to lower your diastolic number. If you watch any amount of videos on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, everyone is trying to sell their ideal diet. A lot of the research supports when it comes to diastolic pressure, the Mediterranean diet. Now, what the heck is the Mediterranean diet? It is essentially a tremendous amount of vegetables with olive oil, avocados, very colorful vegetables, and meat is the second second thing on it. Most people, at least in where I live in America, meat is the main part of the meal and the vegetables surround the meat. The Mediterranean diet is a different way of thinking to where the majority of your meal is primarily vegetables. Then you can have seafood, you can have chicken, you can have some lean beef that basically supports the vegetables. So in simple terms, 80% of your diet should be vegetables. The other 20% could be animal types of protein. Exercise, and this is very confusing for people because many people want to do exercise, but they're very confused because everybody's got giving you conflicting information. And there goes the phone. It's always, okay, we're just gonna have to wait. Hold that thought. Okay, so let's make sure we're in focus. Am I in focus? Yeah. All right, so back into it. It's just funny. Exercise. Should you be doing high intensity interval training? High intensity interval training is for good athletes, people that are in shape. It's not for you. You need cardiovascular training, which is raising your heart rate and maintaining it for a period of time. Walk a mile and a half. The people that walk the most have the lowest diastolic pressure. If you develop the ability to walk 30 minutes continuously at a good clip and you're in shape to do that, then walk farther. Try to walk an hour a day, which is about three miles for the average person. If you can do that, then you can increase the amount of cardiovascular exercise by using a treadmill, by using a step master, by using a bicycle, by swimming. But cardiovascular exercise is the thing that you need. You do not need weights. Lifting heavy weights does not increase or decrease your diastolic pressure. You need to do cardiovascular exercise. So that's all that you need to do. Those two things right there, changing your diet to a Mediterranean diet and cardiovascular exercise will have tremendous improvements in your diastolic pressure. But keep watching, because I have some extras for you. Alcohol is kind of a controversial one. I'll tell you my take on it, and then you can decide what you want to do. They say that alcohol in moderation is good for your heart. Red wine is good for your heart because it has all these antioxidants and Xana, Xana this and Xana that. I'm gonna say bull, and the reason why is because red wine has so much sugar that for many people that have high diastolic numbers, they also have diabetes. Alcohol usually is not good for you. The second thing is that alcohol very often interferes with sleep, and you're gonna find out in just a second that sleep is a major thing that you can do to lower your diastolic pressure. So I say, in my humble opinion, knock off the alcohol. Which brings us to the issue of sleep. The more sleep you get, the better quality sleep that you get, the more rapid eye movement sleep that you get, the better off you'll be. Sleep is essentially or a hormonal rebalance. You need to stop your body from stressing. Cortisol, which is released when we are stressed out, is reduced by more sleep. Cortisol will increase our diastolic blood pressure. Lowering our cortisol levels will decrease our diastolic pressure. The better sleep you get, 
the better your blood pressure is gonna be. Now, what do you do? Here are some tips to get better sleep. Number one, make sure it is cool in the room. If, it, if you're sweltering in the room, it's not gonna work. Make sure you have a comfortable pillow. pillow. Make sure that you're not using things like television and your cell phone and your computer an hour before you go to bed. The reason why is because these things have these lights that go into our eyes and will stimulate our brains and make it difficult to fall asleep. So no television, no cell phones, no computers an hour before you go to sleep. Good pillow, nice and cool, nice and dark in the room you're gonna find it's a lot easier to sleep. Smoking, now this is something, I don't even know what to say. Uh, do you want me to just blow smoke up your butt or do you want me to just tell you the truth? <laughs> I mean, I don't know many people that smoke. It's just, it's not a thing. I don't know why people smoke. Actually, that's not true. I understand why people smoke. They smoke because you prob... And tell me down in the comments why you smoke, if you do smoke. But maybe you thought it was cool when you were younger and now you're addicted to it because cigarettes are one of the most highly addictive chemicals that you could inhale or put into your body. Um, I don't know what to say, but I could tell you this. If you're smoking and you have high blood pressure, you have to understand high blood pressure is a reaction to smoking. High blood pressure is actually your body trying to survive. It's starving to survive. You're, you're putting poison into your body and your body's reacting by trying to live from that poison by raising the blood pressure. You have no oxygen going into your body and your body's trying to raise the pressure to get more blood to the tissues by raising it. You're supposed to have high blood pressure if you smoke. Duh! Who who doesn't know this? I can't believe there's all these, these public service messages that tell us not to smoke. Who's living underneath a rock? I have no idea. So, if you're smoking, what, would you, what should you do to stop? Well, number one, I would say Go to an acupuncturist. They'll just stick needles in your ear, they squeeze your ear. It works and it'll stop the cravings. The second thing is you could chew gum with nicotine, although that's that's stealing from Paul to pay Peter. Uh, and then also get medical treatment. Get on a detox program. You must stop smoking in order to lower your diastolic pressure. That's just the reality. I don't know what more to say. Now, if you do the Mediterranean diet, and if you do cardiovascular exercise, a number of things are gonna happen. Chances are, you're gonna start losing weight. And if you can focus on losing weight, you're gonna have a tremendous benefit. Because did you know that losing about 20 pounds will lose about 20 points on average, 10 to 20 points uh, on your blood pressure? That's amazing. So, the best way to lose weight it's calories in, calories out. That is the simplest thing you can do. You can use an app on your phone and you can type in all the foods that you uh, eat and it'll calculate how many calories you're supposed to eat. You just keep an eye on that and you'd be surprised that if you started losing weight, again, 20 pounds can be in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 points on your blood pressure. So get rid of that weight. Now the last and final thing that we can do to lower our diastolic blood pressure is to take some supplements. There are a number of supplements that have been supported by very good research to lower our blood pressure. And I'm gonna make a list for you and hopefully you've been writing all these things down because I'm gonna tell you what to take and how much to take. So here we go. Let's start with magnesium, magnesium citrate. You just go to a Trader Joe's, you can go online, you know what? I'll put all the links down below so you can order them, have them delivered to your door, or you can go somewhere else and get them. But look at the links anyway just to see what I'm suggesting. 400 milligrams of magnesium citrate per day. Take it at nighttime. That's the best time to take it. it number one, it'll help you sleep, thus getting you better sleep, lowering uh, cortisol. But magnesium will allow a dilation of the blood vessels and lower your blood pressure. Fish oil, take a gram of fish oil every single day. That is gonna help reduce clotting, lower your blood pressure, has tremendous benefits for your heart, 
and all parts of your body. Cacao powder, if you have a little sweet tooth, dark chocolate is something that you can eat. Just a little bit though, you don't need a lot. But research has shown that a, a certain amount of cacao powder will actually lower your blood pressure by 10 points. Pretty good for dark chocolate. Garlic, now not everybody likes to stink like garlic, but I like to eat garlic, particularly on Friday nights and Saturday nights, and the reason why is I don't have patience the next day. And then also what I do is I exercise really heavily on a Saturday and Sunday morning. So if I eat garlic on Friday night, I'm out there sweating, no one's around to you know, smell me. You can have a number of little tiny pieces of garlic and it will significantly lower your blood pressure. Lastly, hibiscus tea, a red hibiscus tea. This is something that is a little bit taste sensitive. Some people like it, some people don't. What you can do is you can make it in the morning, put it in a big cup and drink it throughout the day. Very, very healthy. All it takes is about eight to 16 ounces and it will significantly lower your blood pressure. It has antioxidants into it which strengthen your blood vessels and it helps dilate the blood vessels, lowering your blood pressure. So research shows that all these things that I just suggested to you will actually lower your diastolic blood pressure. Just look this stuff up. It's very, very easy to do. You can do it. I know you can. I have had many patients do these things, lowering their diastolic pressure, and that is how you do it. Make sure that you be healthy because you don't want to be one of those people that ends up ignoring all the natural solutions only to be told to take a strong medication. You don't want to be in that type of boat. Mm -hmm.